So not too long ago, I did a video on making river charcuterie boards, and these are poured resin boards. And if you haven't seen that video, you can click the link up here in the corner. Now in that video, I showed you how I create these boards by dropping two pieces of walnut into a silicone form and then filling the form with resin. And since then, a few people have sent me email to say, hey, show me how you make those. So in this video, that's what we're gonna do. And if you're interested, stick around. How's it going everybody? Steve here and welcome back to the shop. Now, as I mentioned, uh, in this video, I wanna show you how I make silicone forms. A few people have asked and uh, they're really not that hard. So uh, I just wanted to go through the steps that I do to make them. And I typically use these for making things like charcuterie boards where I pour uh, epoxy resin in between two pieces of live edge walnut or, any, or some kind of hardwood. And uh, it saves a ton of time because normally what you would do if you didn't have one of these is you'd create a wooden form, uh, use immense amounts of uh, mylar or, or poly tape to seal up all the holes and make sure nothing sticks. Maybe you use some mold release of some sort. And when you pour your resin, two days later when you take that form, when you take it out of the form, you have to tear all that apart and do it all again the next time. So it's a real labor intensive operation. Whereas a silicone form, you drop the boards in, you do the pour, you're guaranteed that there's no leaks. And uh, two days later, you can just peel that off. It just does not stick to this stuff. So uh, you know, it's a, it's a much faster, much easier way and you get very predictable results. I'll show you how I make them. They're really not that hard. Now, fair warning, they're not the cheapest uh, forms to make. These things will typically cost you anywhere from, you know, 50 to $80, maybe a hundred, depending on the size of the board and the thickness. But you will make that money back in save time in no time at all, probably three or four boards if you're making charcuterie boards. So with that, let's get started here. I'll show you the process of building the form, mixing, uh, doing that pour and taking it apart and uh, show you the finished product. So let's get going here. All right, so first thing we gotta do, of course, is, is cut the material for our form. And what essentially this is gonna be is a box and uh, and inside the box will be the negative image of, of the charcuterie board. So I'll cut the bottom first, and then I'll cut pieces for the sides. And the sides will be the thickness of the, of the base, plus the thickness of my, my item that I'm trying to form, plus a little bit so that we don't spill anything over. And we'll just uh, cut all those out. And if you don't have a table saw, you could certainly use a skill saw. We're not looking for laser accuracy here, so, um, you know, you can get by. Uh, next, of course, I'm cutting the, the shape. Now I want the shape to be a little thicker. So I'm using a three quarter inch piece of MDF as well as an extra half inch. So that'll make the, uh, the form about a half inch deeper than it needs to be. And that allows for this, this extra spillover just in case you pour too much epoxy. You don't want it running all over the table. Uh, and then lastly, of course, I just cut out the exact lengths of all the sides and, and we're ready to put this together now. All right, with the pieces all cut, I can start to glue all this together. I'm going to glue it rather than uh, nail it or screw it together. And what I'm going to do is find the center of each side of the bottom so that I, when I put my uh, form piece in the actual uh, negative image of the shape I'm trying to create, I can get it centered. And when I'm happy with the positioning, I can just glue all the pieces down. You can see that extra half inch I'm sticking down there to make the form uh, a little deeper. We're basically building the form upside down here if you're trying to figure out the orientation. And once I get that, that extra half inch down, then I'll drop my three quarter inch MDF, and which is really the thickness of my typical charcuterie board. And when I'm happy, I clamp it all together and uh, wait for a while. It doesn't take long. This this glue that I'm using uh, dries fairly quickly. So in an hour or two, I can come by and take all the clamps off. And you know we're ready for the next step here, which is to do a bit of taping and put the outside edges on. So now I'm gonna start taping the form uh, for the mold. And I'll start with the inside first. This is the th part I'm taping here right now is what will amount to the inside of the mold. And this is just standard poly tape. You can buy it at any hardware store. 
Uh, it's fairly dirt cheap. It's used for, uh, for sealing a uh, vapor barrier when people are doing insulation. And the reason I'm doing the inside is because you have to get to these tight corners on the ends and along the sides where it's very hard to get to once the, once the side pieces are on the form. So I do, I typically do this first. Uh, don't be shy about using the tape. Uh, it is fairly cheap and uh, uh, it's way cheaper than having a leak in the form. So next I'll, I'll just do the, the sides and uh, you can see I just stick them on there. Uh, you don't have to have to really do anything but tape them. Uh, although I typically uh, tape them really well. Uh, as you can see, I do the outside and then I'll go along the bottom of, of the sides as well to make sure that if there is a leak, it doesn't get through to the bottom of the, of the form and leak out. And then uh, typically what I'll do is uh, I'll just clamp the ends where it overlaps and uh, I'll usually drive a couple of nails in the end just to make sure it's all held together. It also makes sure it, it stays square once you pour the, the silicone in, you want to make sure that the mold doesn't go out of square. So, so I'll just drive a couple nails in and uh, the form will basically be done here and we're ready to pour. Okay, so we got our, our form built, now we're ready to mix some silicone. And what we need, of course, is a scale, which uh, just a standard uh, kitchen or mail postal scale, a measuring cup, some stir sticks, and of course our epoxy. Now the epoxy I'm using is, uh, is this stuff called Pixis. Now what it does, this, uh, this silicone, is it, it forms this white, uh, kind of milky white rubber, and it's very flexible, it's virtually indestructible. Uh, be cautious of those pink or blue silicones. Those things tend to be uh, more a, a one-time use. Uh, when you peel those things off quite often, they'll tear. So uh, this is the stuff I would recommend. I'll put a link in the description down below. Uh, if you're interested in picking some up, you can get it on Amazon. Uh, anyway, we're ready to go. We'll start uh, mixing up our, our uh, uh, silicone here and then we'll do the pour. When we're mixing the silicone here, we're, we're measuring it by weight, which is why we need the scale. And really we're just pouring equal parts by weight. I won't show you me, you know, pouring two, two parts of silicone into a cup, but trust me, they were equal parts of A and B. And once I get them in there, uh, give it a, a stir. You can be relatively aggressive. This stuff takes about a 24 hour period to, to dry. So you don't have to worry too much about air bubbles. Slap your form down. Uh, you can see I put a piece of plastic underneath just in case there's some obvious leak. Make sure it's level because I am gonna pour this right to the very top of the form. And uh, what you see as the top of this form will actually be the bottom of the mold. So I'm pouring it into, the, into what will be the sidewalls of the mold now. And I, I, like I said, it'll be poured right to the top. And uh, when I'm happy uh, without it overflowing, of course, um, I, I just let it sit. And the air bubbles that if you see any will generally pop out. You don't have to worry about them too much. Uh, when it's hard, about a day later, I just take, took the sides off and you could see how easy that was to peel off. And just for a test, I'll put a couple of pieces of, of walnut in there to see if it's going to make a good charcuterie board form. And uh, that's the mold. So uh, we're pretty much finished here. So there you go. You can see the results there were actually pretty pretty spectacular, honestly, and it was really easy to create. You still do have to make that wooden form the first time, but you're only making it once. And after that, uh, you just use the silicone form if you're making something like a char charcuterie board. And the nice thing about the silicone is nothing sticks to it. So you can pour resin into wood and the wood doesn't stick, the resin doesn't stick, you just peel this right off. So you might want to consider this if you're making anything with resin, be it a coaster or you know something as big as a charcuterie board. So with that, we can wind the video down here. I'll put a link to the uh, silicone that I use down in the description below. It's an affiliate link, so if you use that, you're helping the channel. Uh, as always, I'll put a video up in the corner here. Go watch that and I'll see you over there and get out there and make your world, and I'll see you next time.